The investment deduction amount is an excellent way to save taxes. At least, that's what you hear everywhere. Tax advisors also tell you that, and honestly, I have already said this in some videos on this channel. If you are not exactly sure what the investment deduction amount is, feel free to click on the video that I have linked for you in the top right corner. Now, however, I have recently received the following comment from one of you, namely from Thorsten. And Thorsten commented under one of my recent videos, Human Melchior, please stop telling people about saving more with the IAB, that is, the investment deduction amount and taxes. Phew, it really depends on the profit of the year and that of the following years. For example, if I am permanently in the highest tax bracket, then I end up paying more taxes overall. With the investment deduction amount, IAB, what I have is the liquidity advantage. Whether it makes sense, 2001, depends on the opportunity costs. I know you want to keep it simple. That's true, that's always the goal of my videos, but the IAB is really more precise to explain. The crazy thing is even tax advisors don't really understand it. That's absolutely true. Although it's just mathematics, that is also true. So Thorsten, thank you very much. It is definitely worthwhile if my profit in the following year is lower. It roughly levels out the profit over several years. Otherwise, thank you very much for your last sentence. Otherwise, of course, a top guy, top content and top explainer. But I have already written that excessively. So Thorsten, I completely agree with you. And I had already responded to your comment. I will take this opportunity to carefully and thoroughly consider the entire topic of the investment deduction amount from a business and tax perspective. Is the investment deduction amount now indeed a way to save taxes or potentially even a tax trap? I don't want to explain in detail what the investment deduction amount is right now, so I'll just give a brief overview. With the investment deduction amount, IAB, one can deduct investments that they intend to make in the future in the current year. Specifically, in the next three years, so if I plan to make an investment in three years, I can already claim the deduction amounts today. This is a way to essentially generate costs for small businesses. It is also possible to make a claim for this IAB up to a profit of, in total. In the past, it was called the entire savings depreciation. This honestly describes it best. You can already make financial deductions such as, for example, which means you pay less tax and have a liquidity advantage to finance this acquisition later on. This is the core idea of the investment deduction amount 2001. As mentioned, I like to refer to the video I recorded on this topic where I explained everything step by step. And now let's take a look at time series. What exactly does the investment deduction amount IAB do? So if I buy something, for example, exactly for, it could be a company car, meaning I decide this year that I want to buy a company car in two years, then, through the investment deduction amount, IAB, I can already book up to 50% of the amount as depreciation two years before the purchase. That means I have no costs this year, but I can still consider them as expenses in my accounting and in my financial records and have to pay less tax on them. That certainly sounds absolutely fantastic at first. However, you don't get this for free from the government. Instead, you will have a lower depreciation base later on because a car typically needs to be depreciated over six years. And in the case of a normal acquisition, I would distribute the acquisition costs over six years. That means I would deduct 2001 every year. However, if I now create an investment deduction amount of euro and only acquire the car later, then I no longer have a deduction base of euro, but only a deduction base of euro. Acquisition costs minus euro IAB are euro remaining for depreciation. And these remaining acquisition costs after deducting the investment deduction amount IAB are then spread over the usual useful life of six years. That means at a later point in time, I would no longer deduct in the year as part of the depreciation, but rather, let's assume that in year zero, I made no investments. 
and this profit simply increases continuously in the following years by, for example, a certain amount each year. So, my self-employment indeed appears to be quite successful, but I still want to buy a car and I want to buy this car in the first year. In year zero, I simply have profit in the case of no formation of the IAB. However, if I currently create an IAB for this company car, amounting to essentially 50% of the acquisition costs, I can consider 50% of these as expenses in my profit determination. This means that from my profit in year zero, I can already account for it now under the IAB, which is a significant advantage. In year one, I will then make the purchase of the car. This means that in the first year, I made a profit without any investment. In the scenario without the IAB essentially, purchasing the car now allows me to deduct one sixth of the purchase price. One to six because I am depreciating a car over six years, the car cost, which means per year over six years. This means that in the scenario without the investment deduction amount, IAB, I can simply deduct depreciation from the profit each year and therefore have to pay less tax accordingly. In the scenario with the IAB, I have already consumed the depreciation amount in year zero and now only have half available. This means that in the scenario with IAB, I only deduct approximately euros per year now. And we do this in year one, two, three, four, five, and six. And after that, the car is fully depreciated in both scenarios. And when we now look at the cumulative profits, that is the total profits over the seven years that I have considered here, I see that I made euro profit in the scenario with IAB and in the scenario without IAB. So overall, indeed, the investment deduction amount has led to nothing. Now, however, we have the following problem in this scenario, and I will add the tax burden for each individual year to this table. In year zero, I make a profit, which means a slightly higher tax burden of without the investment deduction amount. When I create the IAB, I have to pay less tax and I only pay $581 in taxes, which is significantly less. I have saved through the IAB. So far, that sounds great. In the second year, I still have to pay taxes. In the scenario without the IAB, which results in a tax burden. In the case with the IAB, I now have fewer operating expenses because I have less depreciation substance in the first year. This means my profit is slightly higher and the overall tax burden on it is also slightly higher. And this applies to all subsequent years as well. That means that in the scenario, without the investment deduction amount, I pay less tax. So in year one, two, three, four, five, and six. And in the scenario with the IAB, I pay more taxes in each individual year. And now the question arises, what does this do to the overall tax burden? We remember, the profit was exactly the same as before and the total tax burden over the entire seven years without the IAB amounts to euros. In the scenario with the investment deduction amount, the total tax burden over the seven years amounts to 257,906 euros. This means that the tax burden is approximately or higher due to the IAB. And that raises the question, why? I thought the IAB was a tax saving tip. And here it seems like it could be a tax trap that ultimately leads me to pay more taxes. And that is indeed very important to know. The investment deduction amount is particularly crucial for liquidity because of course, after the first year, after the second year, and after the third year, I consistently find more money in my account thanks to the IAB, since I initially paid much less in taxes. This means that above all, it is primarily a liquidity promotion by the state and not really a tax promotion. This tax incentive could be, I have now constructed the scenario in such a way that the profit increases every year. And with that, not only does the profit rise, but also the average tax rate. 
and I ultimately formed the IAB in my calculation example. So I saved taxes in the year when my average tax rate was the lowest. Of course, when I look at the bigger picture, it's incredibly foolish because I saved taxes in the year when my percentage tax burden was already the lowest. From a business perspective, it would have made sense to allocate as much depreciation as possible to the year when the tax rate is highest rather than the lowest. And the tax burden is highest in the sixth year. You cannot create the investment deduction, IAB, for the entire car in the sixth year. Because if I haven't created an IAB, then the car is completely depreciated after the sixth year. It's very important for you to know that you can save taxes with the IAB if you create the investment deduction amount in the years when you have a higher income than you would have otherwise. Now, we come to a problem. We all do not yet know how much money we will earn in four, five or six years. We cannot look into the future. We only know the current year and maybe when we submit the tax return later, the last year and possibly even the year before last. That means we have a small outlook, but this purely theoretical mathematical consideration of seven years doesn't really help us in practice because we don't know what we will earn in the coming years. Therefore, here in a calculation example, it is nicely shown that the IAB can also have disadvantages. In practice, I must decide to create an IAB for this year or, if I am filing the tax return for the previous year, to include the IAB then. Simply, you understand how your business could develop. You should create the IAB when your income and thus your average tax burden are particularly high. So if, for example, you have stopped your employee job and received a large severance payment, then your tax rate in that year is likely relatively high and in the following years, it is likely relatively low. Then it would be, for example, it indeed makes sense to create an IAB in the year you received this one-time severance payment because you have a more significant tax effect than in the following years. That would make sense, for example, I just wanted to give you a sense in this video that the IAB is not always a good tax trick across the board. It is always a liquidity advantage and it is also always a tax advantage when you create it in the years when you earn a lot. If you create it in the years when you earn relatively little, you still have the liquidity advantage, but honestly, overall, you are more likely to have a tax disadvantage. If you have any questions about this, which I can easily imagine, feel free to leave a comment under this video. Perhaps a small note, this applies to all depreciation methods and all depreciation tricks. So the special depreciation basically works in the same way. You should always create them when you earn more and not in the years when you are earning less anyway. If you need an accounting program to handle this entire deduction or a tax declaration program, then check out my recommendations below in the video description or just click directly here. Or simply to unwind, to relax with another accounting video or a tax video, for example, this one or this one. <laughs>